Good morning. I don't know if you've got a good angle from where you sit, but I am not Pastor Hooker. My name is Jesse Rodriguez. Um, I am here with my family. There they go. Um, we've been in Del Rio for uh, oh, maybe five weeks, four weeks, a month. Um, and they've been coming to the Wednesday night, or yeah, the Wednesday night activities to uh, Center Shot. And my wife has been uh, taking part in the Bible study. And um, thank you, First Baptist, for welcoming us. You've been from, we came and visited in July. And uh, from day one, you've been very welcoming. And um, we've just been blessed by how good you've treated us. Um, and it's just um, overwhelming. I, I'm a native Del Rioan. Um, I haven't lived full time in Del Rio for, wow, I don't know, since 89 or so. Um, it's been a while. Um, but there's a lot of things about Del Rio that don't change. I, I, I seem to kind of slip right in and, you know, visit with people that I've always known and um, it, it's been a good visit, and we've been blessed by it. And um, I haven't preached in English in, in two or three months now, uh, but I have been preaching in Spanish uh, across the border in Acuna in the last couple of weeks. And so if I... No, I won't, I won't mess it up. I won't mess it up. Um, but we are studying in Isaiah this morning. Um, I... Hopefully everybody has recovered from their Thanksgiving comas. I, I fell asleep as soon as I, we were having conversation. The kids were watching TV, and next thing I know, it's a couple hours later, and my wife abandoned me. She didn't nudge me. You're supposed to do that when you start snoring. Um, so anyway, uh, hopefully everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, today is the first day of Advent, and so that's what we will be speaking on. Um, there's a culture all around us that keeps pressing us, and it's motivated by the media and consumerism and all of these things that feed us a lie. And so the purpose for today is that we can go back. Someone was just uh, talking up here about the, the reason for the season, right? We, we are going into Christmas and it's good to have the proper focus on what it is that we're celebrating. So in order to do that, we're going back. We're going back to the Old Testament. Jesus is in the Old Testament also. Um, and I've been taking classes recently at Southwestern. And I just did a big old book report on, the, on this book here. It says, Toward an Old Testament Theology. And basically what it's saying is the same thing as this book right here. It's the, um, the Jesus Storybook Bible. And it lays out awesome, just perfectly for our kids. They, they, we have our Bible studies in the evening, and it lays out and pictures where Jesus is, is in the Old Testament. From all the way back to Genesis, the one that will stomp the serpent's head through all of these lessons in the Old Testament that, that are picture and, and, and shadows of Jesus. And, and so when we get to uh, Isaiah, th this is laying out perfectly. Like, when, when we think about and, and wonder, you know, us as Christians, why people don't get it sometimes when, when it's perfectly laid out in Isaiah, who it is that will come, where he will come, and who will give birth to him? Like, when we get in here, you'll see, it, it, how, how do people not get it? But Isaiah, the book of Isaiah lays it out also. Their hearts will be hardened. Their eyes will be shut. Even though it's obvious to some of us, there will be those that won't understand. So uh, to keep the, the, the focus on, um, on what it is that we should be celebrating, I love Christmas. Uh, I think there's been at least one year when I started playing on my Pandora Christmas songs at the beginning of November. 
That's, that's, that's a little weird maybe to some because what happened to Thanksgiving, right? We should, everything should have its proper place. We, we have, um, I don't consider Halloween a big deal because October is my birth month. So I think of my birthday instead of Halloween. There's, there's a proper plate. My birthday, and then there's Thanksgiving, and then there's Christmas. I, I remember I, I would go over to my grandma's house to, to watch TV because we were kind of crowded in my house. And back in the days of when channel surfing was actually action, you'd walk up and turn a knob to watch what you wanted to see. Do you guys remember those times? It, it, was, it was exercise, right? If you actually wanted to channel surf, you got, got to get up there and turn it. And there was, there was two channels that, that I enjoyed, and they, and they still stick with me, and it left a lasting impression so much that my kids kind of don't like that about me, um, which was a, a channel out of Atlanta. I, I won't name names. I think you guys can figure it out. And another one out of Chicago. And they played... Uh, all of these black and white movies and all these black and white shows and, and one of my favorite ones um, was Andy Griffith. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy Andy Griffith. I don't know why. It's got a great chemistry, great putt. Everything is resolved by the end in 30 minutes and it makes me feel good. So anyway, you can judge me if you want to. But one of the things that they did during the holiday season is um, they, they do these little promos about Christmas. And, and, and one of those promos was... Uh, Andy in the jail, and everybody's gathered around, and they're singing songs. And, and I have to see that show, you know. But before we're done with the holiday season, before Christmas comes, I, I have to see the show, or at least listen to that song. It's Away in a Manger. I just, I love it. I don't know why. It's just, maybe I'm traumatized or something from childhood, but it stuck with me, and, and it will stay with me, and I will pass it on. So there you go. And cartoons. I love cartoons. I still watch them, and I, and I watch it with my kids, Charlie Brown. I'm amazed that today, on network TV, we can see the gospel delivered. It, it shocks me. I'm, I'm so amazed by it. I, I love it, and, and so that's another thing that we, we have to do. So I'm into Christmas, right? I love it, and, and when it gets here, it's so exciting, and, I, and I'm eager to participate. The thing is that we do get distracted. I, I, I love the, the, the Charlie Brown uh, Christmas show because it brings us back. It brings us back to Jesus right there on network TV. And so I love that show. Um, but it does, as we buy into what goes on around us, as we buy into what they're telling us, right? Ha, have you heard how they promote these days, you deserve fill in the blank. A new car, you deserve the latest whatever, right? It, it, they're buying into our flesh and our worldly wants. And it distracts us from Christ, which is the center. That is who we should be celebrating. It's great. I want to exchange gifts. I want to give to my kids and, you know, and love on those in, in, a, in a tangible, physical way. Yes. But it cannot be a distraction. It has to be a byproduct of our focus and devotion to the Savior of the world. And so we're, we're going back. As I was talking about before, Jesus is throughout the Old Testament, and our focus today is in Isaiah. 700-ish years before Christ, Isaiah got a revelation. He got a vision. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 7 is where we're at to begin with. I've got to put my glasses on. I'm uh, reading from the ESV just because I'm accustomed to reading from the ESV, English Standard Version. Um, but there's not much of a change from probably your version. Um, 
In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two, covered, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. Why was he covering his face? This angel, this heavenly body, in the presence of God at all times, was covering his face. Because of God's glory. Because his light shining, illuminating all of heaven is so powerful. He has to cover his face. Verse 3. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. This guy, an angel flying around, covered up with his face and covered up at his feet and, and, and with the other two, he's flying around and he's, it's so bright because of God's majesty and, and, and he can't contain himself. What does he do? He goes to one of his buddies and he said, holy, holy, holy. I come from a Pentecostal background, so if I move around a little bit, don't be shocked. Um, if I get a little bit loud, I, I, I'll try to keep it down. Um, but it, it is just like, man, we, they, we're convinced of God's majesty and his glory, and it just humbles us and excites us that we can be servants of the living God, the creator of this world and everything around us that we get to participate and be in part of his family, part of the kingdom of God. So he tells his buddy, he tells the other angel, holy, holy, holy. Verse 4, And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called. He just spoke, and everything shook around him. I don't have a whole lot of experience with earthquakes, but recently we had one, in September, we had one in Wichita. Um, and, and people can attribute it to different things. I just know I experienced an earthquake. And, and it really rattles you. I mean, literally it does rattle you. Um, we were laying in bed early in, on a Saturday morning, and all of a sudden, just things are going crazy and you don't know what you and you just kind of wake up from a dead sleep and just by his voice he creates that effect the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called and the house was filled with smoke and i this is isaiah uh, he's realizing god's majesty and then his place, as far as his relationship with the Lord is concerned, he is so great, and man, I am nothing. And he realizes this, and he says, woe is me. I am so deprived. I am so, man, I'm so lost. He says, woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips. This is a prophet. He's saying, man, I am... I, Sinful, I am broken. I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. I realize, man, that I am so lost and so far away from his great majesty. He is so great, and now that I've seen him clearly, I'm just broken. I am humbled. The angels know this. This prophet knows this. He has just now realized just how great and how holy God is. He is so awesome. That's basically what he's saying. He is so great. And to think that if, if we look inside, 
an honest look inside, and we realize, right, those parts of us that we don't show anybody else, right, those parts of us that we keep private, the thoughts, we dig down deep in there, into the muck, and we're honest. We can be as honest as Isaiah and say, wow, how can God, how can God lay eyes on me and accept me into his family? Through Jesus, that's how. Because he's not looking at our sin. We realize how much we need him, how desperately we need him. But for those that have accepted Christ, it's a different lens. It's no longer us. It's through Christ. And that I am so grateful for. I I am with Isaiah. I'm like, Lord, you know me. You know deep down inside who I am and yet still loved. Amen. Verse 6, Then one of the seraphim flew to me, because Isaiah just realized, he's like, Man, I, what am I doing here? I'm not worthy of being here. And the angel comes, having in his hand a burn, burning coal that he had taken with his tongs from the altar, And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched my lips. This has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. I just cleaned you up. Now you can go and execute and do the things that you're about to be told to do. I was just saying, if we take a a good look inside, right, if we're honest... And we get there, we cannot camp out there though. We cannot stay there and just, I'm not worthy. I can't go talk to that person because, man, who am I to say anything to them, right? But we cannot camp out there because if they are lost, our obligation directly from Jesus, he says, go and make disciples. Some of his most important words that he ever said was go. His last words, go. He didn't say go if you're perfect. No, we have a testimony. We have a story of God working in our lives. And we, we can go to a person and say, man, I know what you're talking about. We put our arms around their shoulder and say, man, I'm, I haven't dealt exactly with, with what you have dealt, but look at what he's done in my life. And so that's what's going on here in verse 7. Yeah, you're a scum, basically is what he's being told, but you've been cleaned up. Now get ready. Get ready to go and do what the Lord is going to give you. And that's what he's telling us. We are lost, sinful people in desperate need of that Savior. And once we connect with that Savior, we can go and tell people, man, you have to meet this great God. He is so awesome. We battle a lot of the time, those of us that are preaching gospel, that we are trying to um, adhere to biblical truth. We battle things in, in, in false teachings a lot of the time. And so we need this. The only way, yes, the Holy Spirit will give us discernment But this is the way that we learn who God is and how desperately, how desperately we need it. Isaiah um, chapter 9, verses 1 through 7 is our next section in Scripture. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied 
the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy as the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in the battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. No more war. What we long for, right? What we hear every December, like peace on earth. We, we hear that. We long for that. There's something within us that longs for that. There's an emptiness in us. We're looking for justice. We're looking for peace. When will it come? For to us a child is born. It kind of sneaks in there, right? We've got this, this great darkness in Scripture describing and then just like his birth. There was silence for so many years from the Lord. The prophecies were there, but there was silence as far as prophets, as far as people doing the Lord's work. There was silence, and all of a sudden, that prophecy is done. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. We, we long for that, right? Right? When we see the news, it seems like during this holiday season, maybe because we're home a little bit more, like in the news, all of a sudden, the world goes crazy. And in this time of the year, when we're celebrating Christ, and our, and our heart longs for peace, and we look at what's going on around the world, and we're just like, man, if we have a connection with what is going on and how tragic the stuff is that we see, it breaks us, right? And we long for peace. The peace that, like the scripture says, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness, righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. It's only through Christ. Now, Jesus came as a child, no longer a child. He grew up. He preached. He had a ministry for three years. And then he was killed. And if we look at the scriptures, if we look at the New Testament, I won't, I won't go there right now. Um, he did all kinds of things. He, he did work on the, on the Sabbath. He healed people on the Sabbath. He did all kinds of stuff that the Pharisees disagreed with. But right there in front of their face, he declared he was God. And they decided we got to kill this guy. That's blasphemy. If we look closely at, at the scriptures, that is the reason that he was crucified. Not because of all, any other stuff, or at least not according to scripture. So we get him as a child, he grows up. He has those three years of ministry. He is crucified. But he's no longer there either. He is off of the cross. He did more ministry for another 40 days after his resurrection. 
think I just woke a baby up. He is alive. Amen. There is power. The song. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, we're broken. Yes, we're sinful. But we operate not under our own understanding, not under our own power. There is power in the name of Jesus. So, is this world perfect? Do we have peace? No. There's still brokenness. There's lots of people that need to hear from our Lord and Savior. Lots of people. And as disciples, again, Jesus said, go ye, and that's a King James version, go and make more disciples. So we go and we tell people. We go and we tell people, man, Jesus loves you. If, if you could just look past your present situation, it may not get any better here on earth, right? We may not get every person out of poverty, there may be some illnesses that will not be healed. That's under God's sovereignty, but we still plead. We still go before the Lord and we pray. The difference is that starting with Jesus in the New Testament, there is that peace. There is that peace. For those that know him, no matter what comes, no matter what trials come, no matter our loss, there is peace. There is a better life. Again, our immediate surrounding may not change. We may not be a penny richer, but there is peace. Paul said, Man, it doesn't matter where I'm at, with who, I, who I'm with, if I have money or if I don't, I'm a servant of the Lord and he, he gives me the strength. We need to be convinced. It's, times will get tougher. And people will need to hear truth from us. We need to show truth in our lives, in the way that we carry ourselves, in the way we're going to face the same things that everybody else out there will face, those that don't know Jesus. We're going to face the same things, same problems, same sickness. The difference is, how do we handle it? How do we live out our life in representing? We are ambassadors, right? This world is not our home. Our home is with him in heaven. So we're actually, I'm a Del Rioan, but I'm not from Del Rio. This world is not my home. Where is home? With him in the presence of this great and awesome God. And so my task is to come here to Babylon like the people of Israel. He says, go to, to the people, he says, go and invest and love the city and love the place where, and love the place where you're at. Why? So that they see you representing me well. What for? It's attractive, right? People will see how we handle the same situations in a different way and say, man, there's something special about that person. What, what is different? Why aren't they pulling their hairs out? You know, how are they going to make their house payment? How, where's the next job coming from? And yet there is peace. So we're in Babylon and we're ambassadors and we're going to represent our Lord, our King of Kings, well. 
Why? Because we are convinced that he is worthy of all of our devotion. He is worthy of our obedience. Now, I'm not saying, man, in any kind of legalistic way, you need to you know, have a certain amount of people that you're discipling, and, 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 and we're going to collect your numbers and see how you're stacking up. We don't earn salvation. It's only by his grace. It's only through his mercy on us. Yet, there should be fruit. Evidence that we're the type of tree that gives a certain amount, a certain type of fruit. If we're a Christian tree, we're going to give a certain amount of Christian fruit, right? I'm not an apple tree, I won't give any apples. But if you look at my life, there should be people that I disciple, that I'm evangelizing to, and taking every opportunity to show them the way. The way to repentance. Repentance is, is, a, is a term, it's a military term. Those that are in the military, maybe you've heard this, or that were. It's basically, you're going this direction, and you go the opposite way. So what are we doing? It's those people that are going over the cliff, right? Those people that desperately need Christ. They need this message. We're like, no, come back. Do you know where you're going? There is a better way. Let me show you. Let me tell you about my Savior. The creator of the universe. The one that knows every hair on my head. These days it's a little bit less, so it's easier to remember. The dust and the air, right? Have you seen, like, when you're looking out of a window and there's particles floating, right, in the light? Those little dust particles he holds in place. The flowers out in the middle of nowhere, he makes them Bloom. That is the God that we serve. And then there is our own personal story. What has he done in our life? And how can we use it to serve him? It doesn't matter in what walk of life we're at. It doesn't matter what we do in life. We can be um, a carpenter or a teacher, a student, a stay-at-home mom. What are we doing as ambassadors and how are we passing it on? Because we're all disciples. How are we loving our Lord well? And so that's the challenge this morning. Starting, hey man, it's just Thanksgiving. What are you talking about? Yeah, we got to take this thing on right away because otherwise we're led off astray. Let this Advent season be a season where we keep God first. If you haven't met this God, I know this is going other places other than just here. I am convinced that following in his footsteps is the best place that we can be. And so if you haven't met this great God, I invite you to. Again, not because of financial gain, not because of ease of life, because there is peace. There is peace in this Jesus. And he loves us. He loves us so much. Him being God, he could have at any point in that walk up to the cross, up to the hill, at any point, really, he could have stopped it. but because we needed it, because we needed to be cleansed. Our accounts 
needed to be, needed to be um, fixed. And the only one that could fix our account, our debt and sin, was Jesus. So this season, that's, that's the challenge today. Simply, that's, that's what I have for you. And for me, honestly. Because like I said, I can get distracted with Andy Griffith and Charlie Brown and all of these things. Let's keep Christ first. Let's be good ambassadors. One of our um, favorite things in ministry, and we, this is where I met my wife, um, was across the border. It was doing missions, short-term missions during the summers. And I'd, I led construction projects and did translation. But our, our hearts are in, in, in service. And um, I was also a, um, in charge of benevolence and service to our congregation and our community back in Wichita um, for a few years. And and. That is a good, and we see it in the New Testament. This is the way that you should live your life and loving people well as we meet their needs. Why? Because it, it opens a door for us to, again, as ambassadors, go and represent Christ. So in very practical ways, when we serve people, we're, we're representing the Lord, we're representing him well, and then it gives us a door to deliver the gospel. So this season, that, that's my challenge. Take, take every opportunity to serve those around you. Serve each other right here in the family. Yes, absolutely. They will know you by the way that you loved each other. So we do that. But then, outside, as we're, as we're going out in the community, to our jobs, to school, um, wherever it is that we work. We serve the people around us so that we can have that door to tell them about Jesus. Not with a finger saying, oh, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do this. Not... But with open arms. Another picture of, of Jesus in the Old Testament is uh, the story of the prodigal son. And at the end, when the father is awaiting his son, he sees him down the path and he's running to him. That's a representation of Christ's love for us. And so with that same gentleness, we approach those around us and say, man, let me tell you about this Jesus. I've lost track of time, um, <laughs> but again, that's my challenge. If um, the worship team would like to come up, um, here's the invitation. If you haven't, if you don't, if you think you knew this Christ, but you fear, man, I, I really, I think I need a refresher course, or if you've never met this Jesus, there's an invitation today. the only one that is worthy of your devotion, the only one is him. There's everything else has to be second place or less. If you'd like to know him, I'll be down here and I'll be glad to pray with you and tell you about him. Um, Let's pray briefly and then um, you guys can take over. Lord, we thank you this morning. Thank you so much for your love and your mercy, your grace toward us, Lord. That although we were enemies, that's the way that your word describes us. We were enemies and you loved us. Thank you, God. Thank you for um, including us in your family, for giving us the opportunity to draw near. Thank you for salvation through Christ. Amen.